This lecture will cover the Family Center Partnership and give you some ideas for working with parents to promote literacy in young children. The objectives of this chapter are to describe effective parent-teacher partnerships for language arts, understanding different types of communication with parents, and understanding ways that parents can strengthen children's language growth. As a reminder, we know parents are children's first and foremost teacher. The home is the child's first school, and it's very important that we avoid unfair assumptions. We need to employ a wide variety of strategies to develop partnerships with parents for the good of children. Literacy at home is deeply impacted by three things. The first one is the setting itself. The second one is the type of modeling that the child sees. And then there are planned and unplanned events, crises, stress factors, things that are outside of a child's control or even a parent's control. So what do we do then to build language with young children? Well, we need to certainly um, promote literacy by listening and responding to children. We want to interpret their language attempts. It's important to share the world with children and share a compassionate relationship with them and being able to discuss feelings with children. All of these things do promote literacy. We know that parents are partners in literacy development and parents help to support literacy. They promote literacy by giving time to it every day, um, promoting cognition, anything where you're really asking questions, answering questions, discovery, being supportive and encouraging of children through scaffolding and being a resource supports literacy. Parents also stimulate speaking abilities. When um, parents speak to children, and children are speaking back to parents. Those loving interactions promote and stimulate our speaking abilities. When parents read stories, poems, jingles, encourage dress-up play, dramatic play, vocabulary, parents enrich children's vocabulary regularly, um, encourage storytelling, modeling behavior in terms of um, our speaking abilities, really focusing on diversity and asking questions, following interests and feeding children's interests, all of those things stimulate speaking abilities. Parents also build print awareness for young children too. When they make literature available and write things down and um, keep children's work around, make mail and letters and print, and just general print, part of the literacy experience, even the simple things like talking about the signs that we see on the road as we're going from one place to another. Um, builds print awareness and any encouragement of printing, scribbling, doodling, any materials at home that are, um, you know, for writing or talk about the alphabet, that also encourages print awareness. And then even when parents are just um, talking about their own writing and teaching them their name in print, writing notes to children, receiving notes, you know, having children write notes back to them so they're receiving notes and praising attempts related to um, print awareness. That's important. And then, of course, there are experiences outside of the home that parents do to enrich children when, when they go places together and talk about the things that they see, um, which you know can include a wide variety of educational type experiences in a child's life. All of those things are, are um, the kinds of uh, items or behaviors that parents do to um, support literacy in children. Parents promote listening uh, whenever parents are identifying different sounds and listening to children. Um, that's important when they promote an interest in reading for young children, then that also promotes literacy as well. Um, sometimes just even something as simple as having a cozy reading spot at home, a place where a child can go and um, cozy in with a book is very helpful and when parents tell stories, take them to the library, those types of things also promote an interest in reading. There are some uh, great strategies, techniques for parents. With regard to parent storytelling, children love nothing more really than to hear parents' stories. 
um, stories about when those children were kids and stories of, about when the parents were kids. Um, children really enjoy that. It, it provides a great connection. Um, having games with rules, even made up family games, do provide kind of a blueprint for children because language is rule oriented. Home reading and writing centers, as we mentioned, a cozy reading spot, an area that would be comfortable and available for children to write on and going to the library. All of those things are helpful. Now the key to successful family literacy programs which are provided most often to children at risk. We do know that um, children at risk need extra services, particularly in the area of literacy, so that they don't fall behind right away. And there are some hallmarks of um, the types of programs that are useful. Um, many programs address limited English proficiency and income-related risk factors. These are the most common models. And family literacy programs really attempt to break a cycle of intergener intergenerational illiteracy by providing services not only to children but also to whole families. Uh, these would include programs like Head Start and Even Start or Parents as Teachers um, because when you're working with hard to reach parents, families who are very, very stressed out, parents might need ideas in order to promote literacy. So successful programs generally consider the needs of parents as well as what they can offer. Every program, of course, has limitations, but trying to provide things that are very practical like English classes or um, clothing or food, you know, that, you know, that also enhances uh, overall development of a family, which certainly is beneficial to a child in all areas. Building parent esteem and confidence, what we often see is that when families are very stressed, and poverty is very stressful, um, that, that parents, a lot of times their confidence, their own parenting kind of self-efficacy is deeply and profoundly affected by the circumstances that folks are in, and sometimes they need a few good ideas and a pat on the back. Assisting with access to community services, I cannot emphasize this enough um, because when families are experiencing a multitude of crises, it's very helpful to be referred to the kinds of community services that can help folks navigate these, um, these waters. Encour encouraging parental involvement with children's school activities. The thing about parental involvement is that particularly for folks that may have come from a different kind of educational system in another country, you know, a lot of people feel like, well, I'm supposed to be there if there's a problem, but being constantly at the school, why would I, why would I do that? But here in the United States, we have a different model, and we do know from the research that parental involvement is um, something that has an impact on children's academic achievement. It, it really helps. And also, family literacy programs strengthen the homeschool connection just in general. So there's a lot of interaction, a lot of contact. One of the things that we look at in terms of family and center partnerships is we look at television viewing. The bottom line here is that television viewing is negatively correlated with reading achievement. We know this from the research over and over again. Um, the more time children spend watching TV, the less time they spend doing other more educational activities that would be supporting their literacy. Some of the negative effects of excessive t uh, television viewing are listed for you here. Aggressive behavior, decreased imagination, problems with appropriate emotional responses, poor reading comprehension because they're not practicing, pronunciation problems, and listening problems, just to name a few. Some more include visual imagery problems, an inability to decipher meaning from what is viewed, decreased metalinguistic awareness. This means that children are not thinking about what language they're using. They're not thinking about their thinking. They're not thinking about their language. There are fewer conversational opportunities with families because everybody's just kind of sitting open-mouthed in front of the television. It, it, this does not... Um, it, it does not increase social interaction. It decreases social interaction with the family. 
and also it decreases children's problem solving opportunities because again there's a major social component that is taken away and every hour that we spend watching television is an hour that we weren't conversing thinking creatively solving a problem and this is particularly negative for young children because it's so often used as a babysitter and young children are spending hours per day watching TV. For some kids it's almost like a part-time or full-time job. So how do we communicate with parents about some of the ideas that we have about literacy, about what we're doing in our classrooms? How do we maintain that strong homeschool connection for the good of children? Well, it's very important to have informal conversations, daily conversations, impromptu conversations where there's really relationship building happening. We also have bulletin boards where parents can find out the exciting things that are going on in our classrooms. Those things should be posted because it suggests an organized program, an organized class. And then informal of notes, of course, and formal notes that can go home, the kinds of written communications like newsletters or reports that go home. And, um, and then there are other strategies that you can use as well, like workshops or parent meetings. Planned meetings would include conferences. You get together and talk about how a child is progressing in um, all areas. And then you can have methods and materials review meetings where parents can come together and talk about the best possible types of curriculum for young children. And then parent-teacher study meetings where you can get together and try to figure out if there's a problem that needs to be solved in terms of how a child is progressing. What's important about all these forms of communication is that it's happening at all. Is it, what's important here is that parents and teachers are talking to each other about what they're seeing with e each individual child and what needs to continue or change or be done in general for a child to grow and succeed in the best possible way. Parents are a great resource. Uh, we need to appreciate them and value them and their uniqueness. Parents are wonderful as volunteers. Everybody loves to help out and loves to feel appreciated. And um, sometimes we forget to ask parents that have not, you know, raised their hand and said, I, I'll help. But sometimes parents will enjoy having the opportunity to help and maybe are even too shy to ask. So you want to be approachable as a teacher, and the best way to do that is to work hard to build relationships with parents through those methods of communication that we've talked about before. And they're just having an understanding attitude to know that every family is in a different spot in terms of the, you know, where they're at as a family or you know, what's going on within the family system. And we need to be understanding and um, just meet families where they're at. My final thought for this chapter is that we always must remember that it's important to work together with families for the good of the children.